Sheffield United, the Blades. What happened to you? Last year, Sheffield were the bright spark of a Premier League season where they came from promotion from the championship to fighting for European football. It was a season where nobody gave them a chance and it was great to see. But this year, second season syndrome hit them harder than Jake Paul hit Ben Askren. And that was hard. Sheffield United have been relegated without a fight and are headed back down to the championship. But what if Chris Wilder was sacked earlier and Mr. Rebuild came in at the start of the season? Today, we look to not only rescue Sheffield United from relegation, but ultimately turn the Blades into European champions as today we rebuild Sheffield United. But if you guys do go on to enjoy today's rebuild, make sure you bloody scorpion kick that subscribe button down below on the grind towards 400,000 subscribers. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have not seen a rebuild video in the past, here are the rules. The objective of the rebuilds are to win the UEFA Champions League final. All games in the rebuild are simulated. We cannot use the new jump in feature in rebuilds. The Champions League final, however, must be played. And of course, do not get butt hurt if I sell your favorite player. There's the rules and objectives. Now it's time to jump into the rebuild. So I have decided to go with a 4-1-2-1-2 diamond formation for the Sheffield United side to kick things off. Originally they have a five at the back formation, but I don't like playing five at the back in career mode or FIFA in general. So the areas we need to improve probably will definitely need to go for a new attacking midfielder ahead of Ollie Norwood. We don't have a designated attacking midfielder in the squad. Potentially could go for a new left back, new midfielders, maybe new strikers. There's a lot of improvements necessary in this squad. And there it is, lads. Our first addition to this Sheffield United side is going to be for a new attacking midfielder. It is the English wonder kid, Emil Smith-Rowe, coming across here from Arsenal for £13 million. And we have decided to sell Oli Norwood to FC Augsburg for £3.1 There are a lot of players that I want to sell in this rebuild, but Billy Sharp will not be going anywhere. A club legend, a cult hero, blocking all offers for him. But George Baldick is not safe like Billy Sharp. He is headed to Levante for just over four million pounds. And Chris Basham is off to Turkey, off to Galatasaray. The first loan move of the rebuild as well here as we have sent Max Lowe to Benfica on a season long loan. And finally, a new addition to the side at the left back role. It is the French defender Romain Perra coming across here from Stade de Brestois in the French League for 13 mil. Oli Burke off to Sampdoria on a season long loan as well. And David McGoldrick, the Irish striker headed to SC Braga for 2.5 million pounds. And since we do have Romain Perrault coming into the club, we are gonna sell Ender Stevens here to Wolfsburg for 4.8 mil. Ethan Mpadu, feels like this kid's been a wonder kid on FIFA forever, but we are sending him out on loan to Besiktas. The busy start to life at Bramall Lane continues. Jack Rodwell, what a fall from grace his career has been. We're sending him to Club Bruges for £820,000. And Jack Robinson off to the Turkish League as well. So there we go. We really cleaned out house here to kick off life at Sheffield United. You're going to have a little bit of money in the back pocket to spend hopefully come January. But I want to see how the squad's developing and see what sort of a position we're in. Are we in a relegation battle or are we safe? from relegation halfway through the season. But this is the side we are trying to survive relegation with. As you would have seen, gotten things up a little bit here with Smith Rowe and Perot into the side. But need to do some work, lads. Let's check in on the 1st of January. But I thought I would check the Youth Academy before I started going through the season. Blake Dean. Sounds like he should be right out of a Hollywood movie, probably related to James Dean in some weird universe, but this kid looks like an absolute gun. Five-star skills, five-star weak foot. That potential is cooked. Getting him in for sure. Okay. Okay. We are currently bottom of the Premier League on the 1st of January. We're in the relegation battle. 
Jeez. All right, need to get some work done here, lads. We want to survive relegation. We need to go hard. John Fleck sold to Crystal Palace for 5.7 mils. Blake Dean off on loan to St. Etienne for the remainder of the season. Simon Moore, the reserve goalkeeper, sold on a permanent deal. £710,000 in the back pocket. And it is a new midfielder into the starting 11. The Swiss midfielder, G. Sal, coming across here from Eintracht Frankfurt for £25.7 million. Pounds. Hopefully a massive addition to the side and a key piece in a survival season. So there we go, lads. That's the January window done and dusted. We splashed the cash, but I hope it is enough to get us out of the relegation zone. We're only a point out of it on January 1st, so we're just going to string some results together and hope the teams around us fall down. Let's go see how we finish up season one. Oh dear, lads. We're going to the championship. Oh no, not even I could save Sheffield United in this first season. Just like in real life, we finished bottom of the Premier League with Sheffield United. Although we came bloody close to surviving relegation. Only four points behind Crystal Palace, but we are headed back down to the championship alongside West Brom and Brighton. Bloody hell. At the other end of the spectrum, however, Manchester United winning the Premier League. Liverpool take down Newcastle to win the FA Cup. Chelsea win the Carabao Cup. Man United defeat Bayern Munich to win Season 1's Champions League. And it is going to be Villarreal winning the Europa League. We're so far away from that stage. So sometimes, sometimes, you've got to take a step back before you can take a step forward. Let's go, lads, in the Championship. See what we're made of. All right, season two, the goal needs to be getting back up to the Premier League. Going to raise some capital here as we have sold Mousse to Levante for 3.5 mil. And it is a big player departure here as we sell John Egan to Bayer Leverkusen for 10.9 mil. Want to continue our upgrades in the midfield. A big addition to the side here. It is the Marley Defender. Do you call people from Mali Marlinese or Mali? I don't know. Call, let me know in the comment section. But we've sold the Mali defender, or midfielder, I should say, Armadou Haidara. We've brought him for 21.6 million pounds from RB Leipzig. That is a steal and a half. Some good growth there from Blake Dean in season number one. We're going to send him out on loan once again, though, to SC Braga. And we are going to sell John Lundstrom, sending him on a beautiful sunny vacation to Italy for 4.5 mil. Ben Osborne, the latest one of our players, headed to the Turkish League, this time signing with Fenerbahce. Let's go. 8.4 mil. And we have decided to sell Oli Burke on a permanent deal here, headed to Huesca for 1.85. You guys could probably tell that this was coming when I sold Egan earlier on in the transfer window, but we have made a massive addition to our back line. Yunai Nunes believes in the vision. He's taking a step down and coming to the championship as he signs from Bill Bow for 29 million pounds. And Keen Bryan out on loan to AFC Bournemouth. Again, trying to get that growth on Ethan Ampadu, sending him to Ajax for this second season. And there we go, lads. The push towards getting promoted back up to the Premier League has begun. Two massive additions to the side, Haidara and Nunes. Very excited to see what they can do for us here in season two. Just a quick little look, quick little look, I should say, at the squad, at the growth. Definitely need a little bit more growth, but I'm hopeful and confident that this side can get us back up to the press. Okay, we've got a bit of competition here, lads. We're facing a little bit of stiff competition as we find ourselves third in the championship on the 1st of January on 57 points. I don't want to be fighting it out in the playoffs. I want automatic promotion. I want to be going straight back up to the Prem. We need to get a little bit better in the second half of the season. I don't want to rest on the squad we have. I want to get some business done here. And I want to make sure we get automatically promoted. So we're selling Oli McBurney to Besiktas. And there it is, lads. We have made a slight upgrade at the striker role. But it is a long-term decision. Lucas and Metja joining us here from Manchester City for 16.8 million pounds. One striker in, one striker out. And hopefully 
back up into the top two. Let's crack on and see what season two finishes at. Get in there, lads! Champions of the championship, but most importantly, promoted back up to the Premier League here with Sheffield United. It's pretty wild. We only lost two games all season. 110 points. That is a pretty wild season. Ourselves and Bournemouth automatically promoted with Brighton, West Brom, Brentford, and Birmingham City all fighting it off for that final playoff spot. At the other end of the spectrum, however, Wickham, Peterborough, and Portsmouth all relegated. What? Oh, we lost. We were, we're a champ. We lost the FA Cup final 2-1 to Liverpool. Imagine if we won the FA Cup as a championship side and entered the Premier League playing Europa League straight away. Holy crap. Brighton deservedly are going to be the side joining us and Bournemouth up in the Premier League next season. Bayern Munich have won the Champions League and it is Roma winning an all Italian Europa League final. Jose Mourinho masterclass, even though he's not there in the game. Brewster has absolutely killed it in this season though. 24 goals on our run up to the Premier League. That is gonna be so good for his dynamic play potential. Smith Rowe as well, 17 goals, 12 assists. That is fantastic. We need to say our farewells and our respects as well to Billy Sharp, a Sheffield United club legend, officially retiring. Back in the Premier League and looking to come back with an absolute bang here. Tammy Abraham is our first signing of this new Premier League era at Sheffield United. We have signed the English striker from Real Sociedad for £46 million. And in slightly less big news, Luke Freeman has been sold to Brentford for £1.45 million. We have also decided to part ways with Wes foddering him here off to St. Etienne. Goalkeeper clean-out season, boys. Jake Eastwood off to the Swiss League to St. Gallen for £760,000. Tyler Smith also out of the club off to FCMN. And I have decided to loan out Brewster here on a season-long loan. Get him some growth and reassess our options moving forward. The growth of Blake Dean continues though, lads. This guy is looking like a bit of an absolute beast. We've sent him to Aston Villa, which I don't know if is a bit of a, a scene. I don't know if Sheffield United and Villa are like Midlands rivals or anything. So I apologize if that's the case, but we've sent him there on a season long loan. Speaking of season long loans, we've sent Norrington Davis on a season long loan to Ajax. I would have liked to make some bigger signings here, some more signings in this opening window. Unfortunately, we haven't been blessed with the 100 million pounds you normally get for getting promoted to the Premier League, but Tammy Abraham is a big addition to our starting lineup, and I'm hopeful that he's gonna bang in some goals for us this season. But this is the side we have to hopefully survive relegation this year. I think it's a pretty safe claim to say that we're in a much stronger position than we were heading into season number one. The side nice and balanced, but let's go see what our predicament is come January 1st. Relegation battle? What relegation battle? Come on the Blades, we are currently sitting ninth in the Premier League here on 32 points in our return season to the Premier League. This is really mirroring reality where Sheffield United had a great season after getting promoted as well. Let's hope things don't continue in season four. <laughs> Still want to get some business done here in the January window, however, lads. Jack O'Connell headed to Hertha Berlin for 19.1 million pounds. And Ethan and Pardew, the growth continues, but I want to get him so he's a decent backup option. Off to Everton on season long loan or a half a season long. Loan. Another young English stud into the squad. It is going to be Fikio Tomori, the English defender, joining us here from Chelsea for 33.8 million pounds. Welcome to Sheffield United, mate. So there we go, big business on the defensive front. Tomori in, O'Connell out. Let's see if he can help us climb up this Premier League table in season three. I mean, we climbed, not ridiculously, but we climbed. We finished season number three, eighth in the Premier League which is fantastic on our return to Premier League football. Man City winning the Premier League, United closely behind them, but we have finished eighth in the Prem. At the other end of the spectrum, however, Fulham, Leeds, and Southampton all relegated. So 
Bournemouth and Brighton survived with us. Nice lad. Liverpool have taken down Brighton to win the FA Cup. Man City have won the Carabao Cup. Manchester United have won another Champions League. And it is Inter Milan taking down Frankfurt on penalties to win the Europa League. Decent first season all across the board though, back in the Championship or in the Premiership I should say. Lucas and Mecha, 18 goals is pretty good. The same with Haidara, he's pretty, he's scoring some mad goals for a bloody centre midfielder. Also what? Brewster has gone up seven overall on his loan spell at Ibar. Holy crap, that has given me something to think about up front next season. Oh my. So a wild season three. We're back in the Premier League. We're killing it. Let's keep moving forward with the blade. Season number four. We're not here to stuff around, lads. Taking the defense to the next level as we have signed Alexander Sinchenko, the Ukrainian defender, joining us here from Manchester City. 41.4 million pounds, which is an absolute bargain compared to his value. When I signed him in season two, I honestly thought Jibril Sal would be here for the remainder of the rebuild, but things haven't worked out. We've managed to get 40 million pounds for him though from West Ham, which is pretty decent. Same deal with Romain Perot, one of our first signings in charge of Sheffield United. He's been up and down with us but the growth hasn't come quick enough. We've sent him to Sevilla for 22 mil. It's basically clear out all of my old signings day. We're sell selling Lucas and Mecha here to Fiorentina for 45 million pounds, purely because of how well the growth to Brewster has been. And we have made a massive addition to the midfield here. Like I said, not stuffing around this season. Donny van de Beek leaving bloody Ole at Manchester United and joining us here for 80 million pounds. Also gonna sell Max Lowe to Real Sociedad for 28.6 million pounds, along with Koulibaly, who you'll probably see underneath it, for 14.6 mil to Roma. But there we go, lads. Gonna have a little bit of money to play around with come January, which is fun. I like having a little bit of business to do in the January window, but Zinchenko and Van de Beek, two players from Manchester coming to Sheffield, a lot of talent out of the club. But we are throwing around the checkbook, that is for sure. But this is what our lineup is now looking like at the start of season number four. Honestly, my line of thinking is based on natural ability and growth, we honestly might not have to touch the midfield or the attack for a long time now. But the defense certainly needs some help. We need some growth from Bogle. We need Tamori and Nunez to pick it up. Ramsdale as well. It's project defense right now at Sheffield United. We are in the hunt for top four football. Nothing safe at the moment. We've got a lot of work to do. But on the 1st of January, we currently find ourselves seventh in the prem. All right, lads, I have decided we need to focus on the goalkeeper. We need to focus on what's going on in between the sticks. Aaron Ramsdale, whilst he's had some growth in this first half of the season, we just need to get things moving quickly. So, Aaron Ramsdale off to Monaco for 30 million pounds. And we have decided to bring Dean Henderson back to Bramall Lane. He was a hero for Sheffield United during their first season in the Premier League in real life. But Henderson, we've had to sign him. We've had to pay a bit of a premium, to be honest, to bring Henderson across from Tottenham for 71 million pounds but it's the right thing to do. Dean Henderson, welcome back to Sheffield United. There we go, lads. One goalkeeper in, one goalkeeper out. Henderson into the club. Ramsdale out of the club. Let's see what that means for the remainder of season four. Champions League football coming to Bramall Lane next season. Come on, lads. We have finished third in the Premier League here. Actually had a pretty good second half of the season, honestly. 77 points. Let's go, not even close to the top of the league, but comfortably in the top four. At the other end of the table, however, Crystal Palace, Bournemouth, and West Brom all relegated. Why do we keep losing the FA Cup final? We've lost the FA Cup final 2 under Chelsea. Liverpool have won the Carabao Cup. Atletico Madrid have won the Champions League. And Wolfsburg taken down Star of Rene to win the Europa League. Tammy Abraham, bro, what? Tammy Abraham 
has scored 34 goals this season. Are you taking the Mickey? Holy crap, Abraham. 34 goals. That is mad. So, Champions League football in season five. The squad's coming along nicely. A lot of work to do defensively though, lads. Let's crack on and keep rebuilding Sheffield United. We're in the Champions League. We're not here to fuck spiders. We're making a big signing to kick off season number five. Joe Gomez joining us from Arsenal for 91.1 million pounds. Also going to sign Ibrahima Niane as a backup striker. He needed a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of help on the bench to be honest. So we signed the Senegalese striker for 28.5 million pounds here from Real Betis. I was looking at the free agents list and noticed that Taylor Richards was available on a free, 75 rated, age 23, a handy little addition to the side as a backup, and on a free, no real risk. But there we go, lads. Gomez, Niane, Richards, all into the side here. One big addition to the starting 11, one game-changing addition to the starting 11. Let's see what these lads are made of. Just a quick little look at the starting 11, though. Again, some growth needed, really, from Tamore. The rest of the side, Looking pretty damn mint. Just need Tamori to pick it up in the second half of the season. Dean on the bench there, 81 rated, looking nice. Team's coming along nicely. Let's go suss out our Champions League group here for the first time with Sheffield United. Okay, we have got a challenging group here with Sheffield United, PSG, Roma, Celtic. This is not going to be a walk in the park, lads. A real test to kick things off. Let's see what we're made of. Fucking get in there. Let's go, Sheffield United. Not a single loss. And we are through to the Champions League round of 16 alongside Roma. Very surprising to see PSG eliminated. I'll take it though, lads. Top of the group. Who are we facing in the knockout round? Okay. We are versing Locomotive Moscow. This will be... A very interesting opponent. A very interesting challenge. The goal has to always be qualification back into the Champions League. We're sitting here third in the Premier League with Sheffield United. But we are not safe. Only four points separate us and seventh place Arsenal. So we need to take things to the next level in the second half of the season. I've been debating all window long whether I should sell Tamori. He's had a little bit of growth. And I've decided that none of the offers we got for him really met my requirements, met what I was interested in. So, we haven't done any business in this January transfer window. I'm nervous that we haven't done enough, but I'm also happy with the team we have. It's a weird position. All right, lads, here we go. Away for the first leg against Valencia. We're taking on the Spanish side, needing away goals on the board. I love having the away leg first. Need to set ourselves up for the second leg back at Bramall Lane. We are going to quick simulate the first leg. And it's going to be a one-all score line. It's okay. We get an away goal on the board. But it's not super comfortable. I mean, for argument's sake, a clean sheet gets us through to the quarterfinals. But anything more than a like two-all or one-all draw means that Valencia go through. So we need to make sure we win this second leg here, most importantly. We're at home, at Bramall Lane, and the scoreline against Valencia, it's a 3-2 win! Big challenge, jumped over, 3-2 in the second leg, 4-3 on aggregate, things you love to see. Come on lads, quarterfinal bound, who are we facing? Ah, oh, lads, of course, of course, of course, of course. I mean, it is the Champions League quarterfinals, but we are facing bloody Real Madrid. This is going to show us what we're made of. Can we take down Zidane's men? The FIFA gods not on our side either, lads. As we've been thrown into the deep end with the home leg first. A clean sheet is a necessity. We can't give Real Madrid any away goals. The scoreline after the first leg is a nil-nil draw. Come on. Okay. Whilst we don't have the lead, there is no away goals for us to worry about. That is a bit of a relief. But, here we go. Traveling away to the Santiago Bernabeu here for the second leg. 
if we get a scored draw, we head to the semi-finals. But that is definitely easier said than done. As we take on Real Madrid, the scoreline is a 3-2 win. Come on. Oh my God. I've just noticed that. Look at that. So 75th minute, Rodrigo missed a penalty. We've gone up the other end and Tammy Abraham scored. Holy crap, that would have been insane. I don't really know what to make of this here, lads. We've taken down Valencia and Real Madrid. But now, we've been drawn up against Napoli, who are in the Champions League semi-finals. Very interested to see who they have on their roster. But we're in a good position to either face Man City or Wolfsburg in the Champions League final. But we can't get too ahead of ourselves. Napoli at home. Napoli in the semi-finals. Let's go. So here we go, lads. Like I said, we have Napoli at home to kick things off. Same deal as Real Madrid. Need to keep a clean sheet here in the first leg to give ourselves the best chance of going through. Napoli don't have too insane of a side, but this scoreline after the first leg, it's a 2-1 win. We've got the advantage, but I'm not overconfident purely for the fact that Elmas got them an away goal on the board. If Napoli win this second leg 1-0, they'll go through. So, I don't know. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm not, not confident. I'm, I'm, con I'm, I'm, not, I'm feeling nothing, honestly. I feel nothing, lads. I just want a Champions League final. So here we go, grabbing our passports and heading to beautiful, sunny Naples here. Bit of an adventure for us as we look to secure ourselves a spot in the Champions League final. We have the 2-1 advantage. But like I said, that is nowhere near confident enough. Nowhere near safe enough. The second leg away. Are we headed to the Champions League final? Yes, we are. We have absolutely dominated Napoli here. 2-0. Holy crap. Seven shots to zero. Napoli have been absolutely destroyed here. And we are through to the Champions League final. 4-1 on aggregate. Come on the blade. Just like in real life, lads, it is going to be an all English Champions League final. But instead of Chelsea, it is going to be Sheffield United here in the 2025 UEFA Champions League final. What can we do, lads? Can we get the job done against the citizens? We're gonna have to wait and see. Taking a look around the grounds at the other competitions, however, Barcelona win the Europa League. We remain third in the Premier League, caught up almost to the two Manchester clubs. But most importantly, we have Champions League football again in season six if we lose tonight this season. Fulham are just like real life, yo-yoing between the Championship and the Premier League in this video. They've been relegated alongside Southampton and Derby County. Liverpool have won the FA Cup and Tottenham defeat Watford to win the Carabao Cup. But here we are, fellas, taking a look at the squad report ahead of the Champions League final against Manchester City. This team coming along absolutely brilliantly. Got some firepower on the bench. Not too deep in terms of the reserves, but it was pretty hard to build out that core. Loving the starting 11, though, especially the attack that we have put together. The stats are wild. And I'm very excited to see how some of these players like Smith Rowe and Haidara play in game. Can we get the job done against Man City though? City always have an insane team in career mode. But I hope that's not the case today. I hope we can get the job done. Let's go. It's Sheffield United, the Blades versus Man City in the 2025 Champions League final.
the promised land, the Champions League final. Calm the blades. Let's go. Come on. Early goal would be real nice. It's a good run there. Come on, Brewster. Brewster, good touch to take it past Ruben Dias. Good save, Edison. Get the follow up. Come on, still on. Smith Rowe, Hydara. Fuck. Man City really controlling this section. Get there. Zinchenko. No, he can't get there. He's absolutely cleaned up the man as well. Kane going through. Good. No, what? Are you kidding me? How have we not made that clean tackle on Harry Kane there? I thought for all money. No, no, you can't do that celebration against me. You are not Tim Cahill. Oh, nah. All right, I'm not copping that. Stroke of half time. Let's just take it to the shed. This has been an intense half. Oh, why does it keep falling to them? They've got the overlap here. They go in. Get rid of it. Oh, oh my God. That is heart attack areas. We need to pick it up in the second half, lad. In that. Here we go. Brewster going there to Abraham. Abraham to Smith Rowe. Smith Rowe through to Tammy Abraham. Abraham through. Brewster. First time! I thought that one was destined for the top corner. Going to make a substitution here, lads. So we are taking off Van Der Beek. Bringing on Blake Dean. See what that can do for us here. Burge. Going there, Smith Rowe. Bit of a number advantage here. Numerical advantage. We got White to Bogle. Bit of space down the middle here. Over the top. Blake Dean. His first touch is a goal. Come on. Blake Dean. Three minutes on the field. And our Youth Academy product steps up and delivers that. Holy shit, lads. Tied up. Come on. Fuck. Do not allow City... To get themselves back in the lead here. Oh, the tackle. Foden. Going through. They get blocked. Nice one, Dean. First one there. A bit of a diagonal run here. Brewster. Looking for some support. I see about wide there. Dean going to Smith Rowe. Smith Rowe running through. Let's go. Load driven. Off the post. We're in front, lads. We're in front. The counter attack of doom. City just keep pushing at us here. Yes, good tackle, Burge. Please, another counter. Oh, it's going to go early there to uh, to Brewster. Dino going through to Brewster now. Two on one. Sweaty goal opening up. Brewster. Dean. Oh, what a finish. Dean's got himself a brace. That is the cheekiest little finish there. Nah, fuck that. I want to go celebrate with our bench. Dean, you absolute king. Celebrating in front of the Manchester City bench. That is peak level levels of shit outery. Holy crap. Look at this finish here. Oh, this dude has come off the bench, scored a brace, scored that, and celebrated in front of the bench. Holy crap. Come on, lads. City playing the press. Just need to hold on to possession here. Can't give them anything. Would love a little cherry on top, to be fair. Smith Rowe going through to Bogle. Bogle. For the cherry on top! Oh, I thought he scored it. I thought he scored it. Get in there, fellas. What an iconic Champions League final. Blake Dean. Oh, my God. Sheffield United, Champions of Europe. What a rebuild. Lads, if you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like on the video. Scorpion, kick that subscribe button down below if you're new around here. I'll see you for the next one very soon. It has been Jared HD here. I am out. Peace.